That's a great question. So uh, on the issue of term limits, the question was a, a personal one and how long I intend to do this job. You know, when I was running, one of the competitors I was running against made a commitment that he would not do less than four years if elected, and he would not do more than eight years if elected. Uh, and uh, he ended up not being able to do any, because I won. But uh, that seemed about right to me. You know, I, I think if I'd have left you after just one term, you would have felt like I went up there, got a cup of coffee, and didn't really uh, do all I could to fight for you. But I think when people stay for, you know, 10, 12, 14, 28 years, you know, it's problematic. And so I'm not going to be a lifer in this job. I do not expect to serve more than eight years in this job. I might not serve more than six years. I served six years in the state legislature, and I've been elected to serve six years in Congress. That might have a nice ring to it. But here's the problem. It's all the good ones that leave, and it's the worst ones that stay. I mean, Maxine Waters isn't going anywhere. She's going to stay. Adam Schiff's not going anywhere. He's going to stay. And you know, people like, you know who leaves? People like Ron DeSantis, who go and do their six years and then go find another way to make a contribution. So I, I struggle with this issue because I don't want to be a lifer. A uh, little personal news, I'm recently engaged, so I'm kind of excited about what life might hold. Uh, you know, in, uh, in marriage and fatherhood and all those things that, that I want to pursue. But uh, I will not be here for decades. I won't even, I likely won't be here for, for one decade. I think that four year to eight year range is the sweet spot. So I hope you'll forgive me if, uh, if after another term or two, uh, you guys just find me hanging out uh, down at, uh, you know, down at the boathouse, uh, having the shrimp salad. Great, yes ma'am, did you have a question? In the or, no, just just give me a little praise. All right, raising the roof back there. Right here. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. In the black and white shirt. So I'm sorry if you already said this because I did come up a little late. But big news. So I had to hunt for find anything accurate. I was getting called an extremist and a um, conspiracy theorist, but I brought up Biden's son's laptop back during when we were doing elections. Right, right. And that would be resurfacing. I know I don't want the government to control news. Newsmax, yes. Yeah. Um, but it's just, I even see other Republicans that are my age that support this, but they're still believing that Biden really won and that the government, read that the country really wants this liberal agenda because that's what's getting sold to them. And I will not lie to you. I can tell you the only reason I briefly think is because my parents made me. In school, I was told to shut up in color. And guess what my generation does? We shut up in color. So it's kind of scary for me. I'm actually. The question is one of fake news and information that is either put out or, in your case, suppressed. I mean, remember when the New, the, uh, New York Post put out the story on the Hunter Biden laptop, and it was like big tech, big media, everyone swooped in and limited that so that people couldn't consider it in making their vote. I do not believe that the government could ever be trusted to ascertain truth and falsity and to deliver that in a pure way. I've, I've been in government now for over 10 years and I, I don't trust them with the truth. And so I think that more than ever, the obligations of citizenship really impose upon us uh, the necessity of review and critical thinking, like you said, and comparing sources. I tell folks, don't just look at conservative news. I think we have an obligation to take it all in, to review it to know what all the sides are saying. And you know what? Sometimes we can learn from each other if we have disagreement or we can become more enlightened. I mean, I, I remember in politics where it was like, oh man, if you changed your mind on anything, you were a flip-flopper. You could never be trusted by the voters again. And there are issues where my own opinion has been informed by the facts, where I've gained more research, and where I've tried to do better as your congressman or as your representative. And so I just think that in today's era of fragmented information, so much fake news, so many media organizations wanting power, we just have to be ever the more diligent in comparing sources, reviewing the information, and finding the truth. Because ultimately, the truth will set us free. You know, the, the truth is ultimately what preserves and saves America. And this isn't China. You know, you were, the gentleman earlier made the point about censorship. In China, the technology companies and the government are all in one. 
And every human in China has a social credit score attached to them. So imagine if what the government thought of you or what technology companies thought of you impacted where you lived, where you could work, where your kids could go to school, your access to the to uh, religious services or financial institutions. And I worry that the cancel culture might be coming for finance next. What happens if, you know, well, we saw that you posted an America First post, so now your mortgage interest rate is going to be different, or your credit score will be different, or your ability to borrow money to start business might be constrained. That's why we have to hold firm. We cannot just let our country float away as we retreat to the of our own thoughts. We've got to be willing to share those thoughts, review information, and speak the truth. And that is what I try to do each and every day as your congressman.